a fancy night at the local gallery. Let me take a gander at these exquisite works. <gasps> My god, what a masterpiece! I've never seen anything like this. Oh, you mean this old thing? Why, it's my life's work. It took me years to complete. You wouldn't believe how long it takes to make a piece completely out of dots. But if you become as skilled and disciplined as I, then I suppose it's doable. How do you survive as an artist by spending this long on a piece? You get sponsors, my dear. This one was sponsored by Skillshare. But I'll tell you all about that later on in the video. Oh, I see. Well, you've inspired me, you tiny yellow god. I wish to create a piece such as this. Well, you better get started because it's gonna take a long time. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is S Comic Maker, and we're about to spend a long time drawing some dots. And while we get to talking about the art we're going to make, you'll see me getting started on the art in the background here. So, a while back I made a list of drawings I eventually wanted to do on this channel, and Stippling was one of them. I remember doing Stippling drawings when I was a kid in art class, and you might have seen something like this before or have even tried it yourself. But if you don't know what Stippling is, it's where you make a series of dots, typically with a pen, and create an image with lots of light and dark values. The closer the dots are, the darker the values appear, and the farther the dots are away from each other, the lighter it appears. So I thought that it would be a fun challenge to create a large image completely made out of dots using my Copic markers and other alcohol-based markers. This technique was actually a technique used in printmaking back in like the 1500s, and it's still being used by a lot of artists today. It's a very time-consuming technique, though so if you don't have a lot of patience, it might not be for you. But it can be a very rewarding and delicate style to work with, so if you're interested, I would suggest starting small and seeing how you feel about it first. Technically, when you do multiple colors or use a paintbrush to do this, the technique is called pointillism. So what I'm doing right now might be more similar to that, but you get the idea. We're doing dots and making some art. But anyway, for this piece, I wanted to create an image that had a lot of fun lighting and my brain immediately went to that beautiful scene entangled with the lanterns. I love this scene and I love this movie. After deciding on a couple images and knowing that the ones with tons of details would probably kill me, I settled on this one and got to sketching. I didn't go into crazy details with my drawing, so that's why there isn't a lot of footage of it since I was mostly going to be doing all of my details with color. And Man, I am so glad that I didn't spend forever on the sketch because this entire thing took me forever to do. So what I started doing was building some of my base colors. I picked colors that I could find that best match the image and lighter colors for bigger areas that I would have to build the colors up to, like the boat and the dark background, and I just started by filling in the area of lighter colors first. But this comic maker, I've seen the thumbnail, they've seen the thumbnail. How the heck do you know that you had over 50,000 dots in this drawing? Well, that's a fantastic question. So you might have noticed as the footage was playing that I've been making marks on a piece of paper next to the drawing. I knew from the beginning that I wanted to try and keep track of how many dots that I ended up making. So I did the mind numbing task of making a tally every time I counted 100 dots and then started back over at zero. Now, I have to say, as far as an official number, I'm not sure I could accurately give that because after a while, there were many moments where I was counting and just kind of spaced out, especially with the pace I was going in. Sometimes I would catch myself saying like 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, uh, 30, 31, 32, 33, and then I would realize what I did. So I think the number was a bit more, but with confidence, I can say that it was definitely over 50,000 dots. I ended up working on my large render sketch paper, which is 11 by 14 and is a lovely paper. Make sure that your markers don't bleed through. I love this paper. And man, I thought I had a lot of markers, but there are a lot of colors that I didn't have that I could have used for this, like a larger range of purples. So that's why for this piece, I ended up using a mix of Copic markers, Parku, and Arteza alcohol-based markers. And it still felt like there were some colors that I was missing. You can of course build your colors up, which is what I tried doing with this piece, but definitely think I'll be buying a couple more when I can. I tried blending some of the colors together to make the purples that I wanted, but the 
kinds of reds and blues that I have wasn't giving the right amount that I needed. Actually, the color I ended up using the most was a Copic marker called FRV1, which is a fluorescent pink color. A lot of the colors that I had just weren't bright enough, but with the lighting that was on the left side of Rapunzel, the fluorescent pink color was the brightest one that I had, making those highlights really, really pop. As far as the things that took me the longest, I thought that the details in her clothes and face would take me the most time, but of course it was actually the background and the boat since they are such large areas that needed lots and lots of layers. This whole thing took me well over six hours to complete and I had to break it up into parts because after a while of controlling your hand to do the same small motions over and over, your wrist starts to kind of scream at you. That and sometimes it's just good to take a break from something you're working on. I don't know about you guys, but I always end up in a love-hate relationship with my artwork where I like it one moment and then the next moment I want to throw it out the window. But that's why you'll probably see some different lighting in this because I was working on this at different times of the day and night. Then as far as things that I didn't end up liking about this, I did mess up a bit on how the fabric falls on her dress, but it isn't the most noticeable unless you can compare it to the original. And don't, don't you be going and peeking and comparing at that one or, or you'll see all my flaws. I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Overall though, I'm pretty happy with this one. I know this sounds weird, but ever since Tangled came out over 10 years ago, my god, I can't believe those words just came out of my mouth. Anyway, I love this movie and I've always wanted to draw fan art from it. I've done a couple drawings in the past, but nothing I've ever been that happy with or finished completely. And this was the closest thing so far, so I'm really glad about that. In the future though, I'd like to try to make my own piece where I do all the poses and stuff myself, but that will have to be something that I do in the future. For now, this one is done. I tried to get a photo or some footage of this one outside with some flowers and grass and nature, but it's been raining all freaking week and this week there's a hurricane coming. Hurricane Elsa, no less. Maybe she's jealous that I was drawing Rapunzel and not her, so she came straight for Florida. But, uh, <laughs> Tangled to better movies, so. <laughs> But anyway, this was a super fun challenge and I'm so glad that I did it. If you want to try stippling for yourself and want some extra tips and tricks, then you should definitely head over to Skillshare, who is the sponsor of this video. Guys, if you've been over to Skillshare, you know that they have tons of amazing videos. But if you haven't heard of them, Skillshare is an online learning community with an absolutely massive amount of videos, and I'm talking thousands of videos that range from dancing, paint pouring, soap making, furniture design, and much, much more. I mean, they have a whole class on how to cook eggs. Eggs, people! I mean, come on, you're not gonna wanna miss that. Every time that I decide what art that I'm gonna make when I work with Skillshare, I always search up classes related to the topic I'm drawing, and I find tons of other great videos and classes. I mean, it really is finely curated for learning, and they're always launching new classes, so there's something to see every time you visit. There are also no ads, which makes the classes flow beautifully. In fact, I was really surprised by the amount of classes that they had about stippling. There were videos about the history of stippling, how to build your values, and even classes for beginners. If you're wanting to give this technique a try for yourself, I would actually recommend Stippling for Beginners by Bianca Hawk. She just seemed really down to earth and she shows all the different supplies that you can use by trying out stippling for yourself. What I really liked about her class was that she picked supplies that are accessible for pretty much anyone to get started. Like she even has a ballpoint pen in her supplies. Her class also talks about how your supplies work with this technique and how to map out your darks and lights in your final piece. And then below the video, you can even see some of the artwork from the people who took her class. So you should definitely check it out. With an annual subscription to Skillshare, you get a never ending buffet that you can sink your teeth into. And of course, the first 1000 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare share so you can explore your creativity. So give it a go and see what kinds of things you can learn and thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Oh man, my arm is so tired after this one, but I'm so glad I was able to get through this piece. It was a really rewarding experience building up all those colors to the end and seeing this final product. If you want to see any of my other drawing challenges, you can visit my challenges playlist in the iCard here. As always, videos like this are possible because of my amazing Amazing banana members and people like you who like, comment on, and share my videos. I appreciate you all stopping by and I hope that we can draw together again soon. Bye guys!